Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as everyone's favorite German African nation sometimes, Deutsche Middle Africa. But we're not led by a certain dude, we're led by another dude named Wilhelm Salz, but in the heart of Africa. Born after the absorption of the French colonies gained by treaty after the Valkyrie, Middle Africa is a massive swath of land. Composed of cities, chiefdoms, kingdoms, farmlands, jungles, savannas, deserts, and more, it covers half of the Dark Continent. A complex web of treaties, agreements, and tacit understandings, the colony, while stable, was remarkably unprofitable, and no part due to the continued protection of the British colonies placed under our suzerainty. Following the 1925 British Revolution, Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, and Zambia's administrations is funded by Middle African prophets, our Stahetler, Wilhelm Solf, and Heinrich Schnee of Ost Africa have thus sought so far. We managed to keep our bureaucracy on good terms with our French, British, and Belgian patrons, but trouble is brewing. The old guard is challenged by a new clique that seeks to centralize Middle Africa further under German rule, and within them is a sinister cabal of extremists led by Hermann von Goring. We want to exploit our good patrons for their personal gain. Self is getting old, time is fleeting, and von Goring promises untold riches to the adherents, no matter the cost. But could that cost be too great for Middle Africa to pay? And will the Kaiser allow von Goring to make such a, take such a risk? Room und Erde, as we do an annual financial statement. Now, I think I played Middle Africa before. I don't know if I played in Kaiser Redux. I'm sure I played it in, in Kazarek, but I'm not entirely sure. In order to further assert our control over Africa, it's necessary to take inventory of our administration staff and coordinate a plan of action. Our first step is, in this is to overview our annual earnings to see how much profit we made. The Mozambique situation. During the Valkyrie, the situation in Africa was truly paradoxical. The war in East Africa ended in a stalemate where the Entente occupied German East Africa while we occupied Mozambique. Both sides recruited thousands of Africans whom, from enemy territory as porters. Armed guards of soldiers now after the war we had to punish those who joined the Entente side. Now many of those natives are displaced across Mozambique's border and there are many rumors that the new extremist government of Portugal is willing to arm us or arm them against us. We must prepare. And the new colonial group. The NKR, the new colonial grupa, stands as <clears throat> uh, the main political challenge uh, to the long-standing dominance of the DKG, composed of a few German veterans who had broken off from the DKG, like Franz Ritter of Van Epp and Reinhard Heydrich, oh, rest in peace, oh my goodness, who now leads a band of younger, more ravenous officers and soldiers in defiance of the status quo, seeking a larger, more centralized, and more Germanized Middle Africa like me. The NKG cares not for obstacles such as human rights and the like, wait, waste of time, and instead are solely focused on increasing the Kaiserreichs and in turn their own power and fortunes. As if this was not dangerous enough, the group has currently rallied around him in Goring, son of the infamous Butcher of the Hero, Hero and an accomplished fire race from the Valkyrie in Goring. They see a useful figure to capitulate or capitul catapult themselves and in the position of Stott Hitler. But a man such as Goring always has his own ambitions, and even if the rest of the NKR is not aware of this yet, in secret, he is the head of a small group of national radicals known as Souverainisten. This group of sovereignists secretly plot to surpass the centralization efforts of the NKR and see it seeking to build up Middle Africa as a truly independent state that is on equal footing to the Kaiserreich. Though this is likely a fool's errand, and has not stopped the madman Goring from drafting up plans and strategies for how to achieve his demented goals, and with his ever-growing army of young followers marching behind him, the threats may not be as hollow as once up. Regardless of Goring's scheming in the dark, the wider NKG still holds a great sway of influence within the government, and as Stahetler Solf soon passes like he's expected to, the NKR would serve as the DKG's and RFG's main rivals in the race for picking the new Stahetler. Whether or not the NKR succeeds in their dreams of a centralized Middle Africa, or God forbid Goring and the Suvernistin get their way soon, uh, shall be determined as a very destiny this dark cut has been hands in the balance. Maybe Middle Africa needs some new blood in the command. The new, the German colonial company. The DKG, or Deutsche Colonial Gesellschaft, has long been the dominant political force and leading party in Middle Africa. Composed of a mix of veterans, generals, honored colonial bureaucrats, and various other aging relics of the Valkyrie era and permanent, per permanent fixtures of the German colonial regime. The DKG is a staunch old guard of the Middle African political scene. Like an iron wall, they stand unyielding defense of the status quo, seeking to continue the Kaiser's African project, colonizing swaths of Middle Africa, and reaping the profits of this expansion without dragging the continent into chaos with excessive reform or centralization attempts. Since the fires of the Valkyrie, though, the DKG has ruled over Middle Africa, guided by the likes of Wilhelm Solf, Heinrich Schnee, and many other titans of the German colonial scene, but since the early 20s, these aging agents of the Kaiser had not ruled alone. After rising tensions across Middle Africa after the collapse of the British and French empires that led to a colony taking all the old colonial lands of their fallen enemies, instability and unrest across the Middle colony were at a fever pitch, but after careful delegation, cooperation, diplomacy, Stahl Hitler Wilhelm Solf was able to arrange a groundbreaking coalition government with the Reform Group, a massive group of more liberal minded colonials mixed with even a few Ascari and Evolues allow within the government that are in hell bent on reforming and modernizing Middle Africa into a functional, loosely democratic state. With this unheard of cooperation between Germany's colonial old guard and this liberal dominated clique, Middle Africa has largely towed the main line, never veering too far to set the status quo, while occasionally pa passing tacitly liberal policies to maintain the coalition and keep the peace. But with Stahl Hitler self growing older and less fit to rule the wild frontier with each day, many believe that the writing is already on the wall for the DKG as the RFG seeks to spread their own wings while the DKG's other, more hostile political enemies gather strength in the dark. May the old guard remain ever vigilant. 
So we got dug about a financial statement too, but the rift between the old guard and the young officer's clique. Also, this is my first time playing this, so I'm going to read through pretty much everything, but let's see. Long has a Kazarek now held a stake in Africa, first obtaining West Africa, Sud West Africa, and Cameroon in 1884, in the Berlin Conference. In the decades that have followed, though, the Kazar's ambitions have only grown in now and after the Valkyrie and its wake. The Iron Cross of Germany looms over two-thirds of the continent. Since its inception, a loyal clique of staunchly monarchist generals and bureaucrats have stood as the scions of this new colonial realm in the form of the DKG. As the years pass, however, these aging veterans and relics of a year, uh, year long, long past have only gone older and with it their grip over Africa has slipped, a fact sharply shown in their need for, to form a soft ruling coalition with elements of the reform group up shortly after Germany's victory in the Valkyrie and the hawkish, or in the aftermath of this necessary decision. The NKG, a rival group of aging hawkish colonial administrators mixed with various elements of the less radical younger officers, broke off from the DKG to form their own clique poised to take the position of Stahler for themselves. This syncretic clique of both young and old officers seek to decentralize and further Germanize Middle Africa, but their goals are far from extremist or radical in nature. That dubious honor goes to the young officers' clique, who have increasingly become so-called the Souverainsten, consisting of various delusioned Middle African youth officers currently within the NKG, who join the colonial service to further the pride of the fatherland, only to have the dark and decayed nature of Middle Africa revealed to them and led, though unofficially, by Herman Goring. These Suvanistan are a menace to Middle African stability. This divide between a dying old guard and falling to various flavors of young officers and civilian movements form the basis of Middle Africans' internal political divisions today, and if they do not get a grip on the situation soon, the stalking opportunists like the integrated French, the autonomous Anglos, and the ever more angry natives may seize on the chance to strike during the chaos. The po politics of Middle Africa dance on a nice edge in the sad state of affairs. Oh God, no. Oh, Jesus Christ, no. Middle Africa has been in a tense situation ever since its creation, barely holding on through a complex set of deals, alliances, and sometimes a brute force, but with Black Monday. The economy flatlined almost immediately, with our debt increasing faster than ever before. Our currency, which is linked to the German Empire, has become as worthless as the paper it is uh, made with. Now our government has been un given an unpleasant task, to say the least. Fix a crisis. Or prepare for unforeseen consequences that could change the fate of the continent. Hiya, Safari? Oh, Jesus Christ. Monthly collapse increase? Oh, I should not have clicked on this one. Oh, my God. Uh, unlocks decisions to deal with various settler groups across Middle Africa, which we will need for your plan. Back to the basics. Um, royal tours. What gives us more political power? Because my god, we're going to need a lot of it. We get a research class. That's pretty good. Consumer gives more. Ooh, that's not bad too. DKG's in power though. Um, if I go down this way, because how do we do this one? We need to have. Does not have a. National spirit. I'm just dead. Oh, well. We can't do this one then. Maybe we should have waited to do this. Well, crap. Um, because I, I want to get Goring in. Like, I, I gotta get him in. So, with this one, uh, Souverainis. Souverainis. Souver and Souverainistin group. But until the corruption happens, I have Goring try to cross the investigation, have to stay, and ignore the investigation. Be ready for collapse, basically. Schnikes. Crap. <clears throat> I should have really waited. Black Monday adjustment. Float the mark. Oh, that would have been so much better to do. Actually, with this, uh, we don't have it actually in. So we have the rip, which is really bad. We don't, we get, like, no political power. Jesus Christ. French settlers. Yeah, maybe I should have waited to do this one. Look at all this crap we have got. Oh, my goodness. Reliance on the mercenaries? We get more weekly manpower. That's mega, legacy of Mahewa. We get more weekly manpower, too, which is nice. Oh. Huh. Um, of course, we have military reforms we could do over here too, but what else are we supposed to do? Because, oh my goodness. Land doctrine. Eh, jungle's nice. Flieger coal. Avocado Flieger coal. Bomber aircraft. Oh my god. Well, I mean, we could go this way to start maybe, because we can't do that, so I don't want to click on that. Um, back to basics. Our administration draws from over 50 years of experience on the Dark Continent, undefeated against impossible odds in the Valkyrie. We understand that Africa is very different from Europe, and we're aware of our limitations. This is our strength, not our weakness. Uh, I'm going to race for... It's only 5%, but like, Jesus Christ, there's like nothing here. Royal Tours. I mean, that might be really good for political power down here, too, and this one, too. Promote African studies in Germany. An army for Africa doesn't help us out. It's only 5%, though. This is not bad, too. That's actually really good to get, too. Um... If we do that, can we still go this way? Uh, we, should be able to go, we should be able to go this way later on. So I'm going to assume we can. So we'll go Strategic Resource Reserve. In the last war cut off from Germany, we had to improvise our own supplies. We found ways to manufacture torpedoes, artillery shells, dyes, liquors, and foodstuffs out of practically nothing. We should perpetuate this tradition and find ways to improvise uh, the manufacture of goods that were cut off from the fatherland again. Cash crops exports. It's no secret that the quest for exotic goods have always been a driver of imperialism. Many tropical crops can grow in sub-Saharan environments such as coffee and cocoa. We should focus on these 
rather than staples. Uh, and poor food from Ukraine or East Russia to make up for any imbalances. Because that won't lead to any problems Buy ever. and resell staple crops. Azimuth has been observing that it's been proven difficult for settlers to sell produce on the international market. Embargoes by the Entente limit the potential buyers who, from the get-go and our policy regarding who can export what are Byzantine and confusing. To make matters worse, the French settlers within our territory are straight on pre-Valkyrie guerra terms and are largely evading our taxes this way. We must seek to remedy this by purchasing crops directly from our settlers and resell them ourselves. One price, one market, one middle Africa. We'll get more uh, daily authoritarian support for 45 days and get some disgruntled mar guys. We get 50 political power, which we need. Oh, we can only do one at a time, I guess. Um, I guess we are authoritarian Democrats. And it's going, oh my god, it's going down so fast. Oh, well, look at that. Black Monday. A massive uh, breakdown occurred yesterday in Berlin's stock market. Also, if you were to read about this one, please go ahead as well. Um, or I guess just in the light of the unprecedented economic crisis, we can expect all kinds of economic setbacks. Uh, the German economy is in tatters and our economy is sure to follow. We must cut back on much of our spending and immediately look for ways to fix our economy. The Colonial and Gazelle Chef is forced to get a loan of 300 million Reichsmarks to compensate our private investors, uh, which now add to our national debt. It could take many years to recover from this. Disastrous. Shnikes. Oh my god. Back to the basics. Well, screw this one then. We're going to go over here, float the mark. Resource extraction. Fiscal austerity. 15%, 15%. Uh, float the mark. Since 1921, colony has printed its own currency, the African mark, which has been pegged to the German mark. By allowing our currency to float, we can reduce the price of our exports and return revenue to normal. Unfortunately, returning to normal means adding another 100 million Rex marks to our debt. The death of Wilhelm Solf. Saddening news is spread across middle Africa in the wider Kaiserreich this day for a long career. And decades of service to his nation and the crown, Star Hitler Wilhelm Solf has passed away. A visionary that has propelled middle Africa into a new age of prosperity and relative peace, Solf has ruled our Malaga colony as head of the DKG in a groundbreaking coalition of various elements within the reform group put together. This administration has passed new reformative policies with each session of Middle Africa's leading minds further modernizing this back once backwards relic of a colonial era long past, and on sauce replacement Heinrich Schnee hopes to carry on his legacy. However, not all has been so peaceful and pro prosperous as many of the propaganda posters around the colony so call them. So claim for ethnic tensions and political infighting are once again on the rise, with the Mau Mau and open rebellion in Kenya, the Mwali antagonizing the Flandro Wallonians in Katanga, the Muslims in Hausa land constantly riding in a slew of other internal issues. Middle Africa's once unified political stage has been broken down into a pit of political maneuvering and scheming as each faction seeks glory and power. The chief threatens the chief threat to the Shni and the DKG is the NKG, a coalition of eager young officers and disillusioned old guards that rallied around figures like Franz Witter von Epp and Reinhard Heydrich, while nominating the ever ambitious Hermann Goring as the frontline candidate in the race for Stahler, hoping to bank on the Goring family legacy to carry them to victory over the old guard and the DKG. Hermann's father was once governor of Sudwest Africa, serving admirably, ambitiously against the Her Herero, the long plague the German regime, and as such, the other members of the NKG believe that Goring, despite his reputation, is their best chance to seal the Stahler ship. After days of debate, the interim ruling council of Middle Africa had finally agreed on a candidate put forth, and now the rest of the colony would see who they have nominated. However, despite the nomination, the final choice is up to the Kaiser. Hmm? He's losing even more political power. Let's hope Gorman can solve this. Oh, we get Reinhard. And he get naval XP. Oh, my finger slipped. <gasps> Look at him. He looks actually not too bad. You know, before all that heroin. Or, I mean, not heroin, but, uh, no, uh, oh, god, what was that drug? Not heroin. Oh, I forget what the drug is called. The time is recording. Someone's gonna put in the, in the, uh, uh, negative 500, Jesus Christ. Uh, put it in the comments. What was it? I forget. Thyssen's Middle Africa. The new colonial Regierung has stolen the mandate from the rule of the Deutsche Colonial Gazelle Shop following the death of Shah Hitler Wilhelm Solf. Though Hermann Goring has called the shots of the new government as the new Shah Hitler, Fritz Thyssen and Middle Shah Volschung's Gazelle Shop provided the NKR with substantial monetary aid and support, using this influence to secure power and revolutionize the Middle African economy. Thyssen and his goons seek, or Tyson, uh, seek to immediately undo or reform many of the more archaic DKG policies that Tyson felt feel were too drastic, or not even drastic enough. Particularly, he and the NKR plan to pl pass a new slew of market-friendly reforms which will accumulate new resources of wealth for the colony, namely from the vast material and mineral riches from the dark continent, hidden away, also while readying the colony for the inevitable future of war. This flies directly in the face of the past administration under the DKG, who grew famous for the subservient policies that only handicapped their economy in order to fatten the pockets of the Junkers in Berlin. We just see how Tyson and the rest of the NKR impact this massive colony. We should no longer shoot ourselves in the foot just to nurture Kaiser Slackies. So we actually get 50% more stability and way more political power. Ooh! Even though it's really bad for us. The funeral for Wilhelm Solf. Under any thunderfilled Sunday, the great Wilhelm Heidnick uh, Solf was laid to rest at the Berlin Cathedral. <clears throat> Given full state honors by the Kaiser himself, it was in attendance of this hollowed and somber event. Solf was buried in the same cathedral as the old dukes and electors of Prussia, in the city of his own birth. 
Surrounded by his political allies from Middle Africa, as well as a surviving family and close confidants, the body of the old honorable self was lowered into the soft earth, entombed in a wo rosewood casket using lumber sourced from the late Stahler's own Middle African summer estate. With his passing, the position of Stahler has been left temporarily vacant until a new replacement is put forth and accepted by the Kaiser. But until then, a small council of DKG officials led by Heinrich Schnee shall maintain order in the colonies now as his old time of an era of the long past finally meets the long dark. And Middle Africa must open his eyes to his new dawning destiny. Rest easy, may the gates of heaven be open to you. As we're floating the market, we're going to kill ourselves here now, because I should not have taken this one early on. Yeah, probably should not have. Fiscal authority. Uh, uh, <clears throat> austerity. Time to tell we must all tighten our belts. It's time to introduce a pay cut to all of Middle African employees. Our inability to cut the salaries of our French uh, civil servants and those of the Schutz Truppen active in the British protectorates mean we have yet to add another 100 million Rex marks to our debt. God help funds. Yeah, I might go back and not do this one immediately, because this is really bad. <clears throat> yeah, this is really, really bad. And it's not like we can do anything about it either. So, crap. With the Kaiser's approval, Hartman Goring has been selected to become the next Stahler of Af Middle Africa. In a few short days, Goring shall be sworn in officially, and all of Middle Africa shall tremble before his mighty ambitions, though many are fearful for his rising power and the growing tenacity of his young officer Kulik. His enemies and detractors can do little now, for Goring shall soon be atop. I'll have the new Stahler Goring. <clears throat> Yeah, that's not good. I guess we can do the four-year plan. I guess we didn't have to go this one at all. Troubles brewing in Europe and Asia, and the syndicates grow bolder every day while our militaries become complacent. Once planned a timetable for economy and military ensure that we are ready to support the follow in any way possible, I might have to cheat in this campaign, but we'll see. Illicit activities. The Black Money Crisis has thrown our Bureau of Budget into complete disarray. Only Asmus is still convinced that we can stay the course by continuing with his proposals, but almost everyone else in the Middle African administration is calling for the radical, drastic action. The new colonial clique, and in particular the Souveranistan, within themselves have already approached us with some alternative means of dealing with our skyrocketing debt. Whether we actually listen to them is up to us, but there's little doubt that without implementing at least some of their ideals or ideas, Middle Africa will spiral into more instability than they can ever hope to recover from. <coughs> um, also, we have this internal Middle Africa. Uh, descent is currently two. We want to centralize Middle Africa and prevent its collapse, basically. Um, so I've already opened all these up. I've already closed out all these. So Middle Africa is a two and two. Shh, not good. After I'm only able to get over 20 result and collapse, which is not good. Centralize these guys. Um, Fresh up Middle Africa is level five. Kenya Uganda is one. Nigerian Free State is one. Congo Virstadt is three. And North Rhodesia is four. So grow opium. Um, I'm kind of okay with that. Herman von Goring, ever looking for ways to increase his influence in Middle Africa, has apparently been in talk with compatriots in Ostasen, who have collectively approached us with a suggestion. Goring owns several plantations in Tanga and Dodoma, which is willing to donate to the state so long as we assist him in growing Afghan opium on them. To sell them on the black market, it assures us this will not get us into legal trouble if Berlin gets rid of this, but the consequences of introducing so much illegal opium onto our streets is totally unforeseeable. Human trafficking. Not bad. Blood diamonds. It's a lot of political power. Embezzle funds. Ooh, you get a lot more. Ooh. But funds disappearing? You lose political power, stability, and monthly collapse increase. Ah, oh, that's so and so good, but... Ugh. Issue MEFO bills. We lose more stability, which I don't want to lose. We give away better consumer goods, though. But when it's done, you get more political power. Issue the bills? But I don't want any more bills. Grow opium? Um, Human trafficking sounds like fun. Let's just grow opium first. We can do human trafficking next. Of course, we're reselling this stuff too. Um, we get that stuff, but that's okay as well. The Duke of Oldenburg, who administers West Africa on behalf of us, has spoken to Harvey Firestone of the Firestone Rubber in Liberia. The two men offer a lucrative business plan in which we support Monrovia's rubber plantations by providing Firestone with a yearly quotum of labors which will pay us handsomely for when asked. Um, uh, oh, crap, come on. Uh, what kind of labors they are looking for? A representative of Firestone slipped us. Some American dollars and requested us not to inquire further on the matter. It seems obvious that what is being suggested here, the Colonial Gazelle Shop is debating how to move forward with more political power in mind. And also, we needed more guns for some reason to sell them to, you know, Germany itself, but, you know, whatever. This is so bad. Jesus Christ, this is so bad. It is debt, or not debt, but like political power is not decreasing technically, so. Um, yeah, this is so bad. I want to get involved, but like, my god. 90%, negative 90% construction speed. Askari is promoted. A military ceremony took place today out of the Capitol building in Dar es Salaam. This afternoon, as a number of venerable Askari were formally given promotion to the officer corps. Sitting alongside of, uh, a line of honorable, dark skinned warriors, General pa Paul von Lutte Vorbeck pinned the medals to their chest, faithful in the knowledge that these brave soldiers of the colony shall serve the Empire with loyal tenacity, loyalty, tenacity, and temperance. And not in Kaisers. The DKAEB has been sold. 
The Deutsche Kasselische Abessian Einzelbahn Rail was established in the early 20th century, linking Addis Ababa and Ethiopia to Djibouti. After a series of German-backed expansions, it's now used mainly to transport ore from the Congo Basin in Middle Africa to Djibouti. The present economic downturn in the rules meant that the ore is no longer being purchased at the rate it once was, resulting in fewer transports for the D-P-A-K-E-B. Huh, probably K-A-E-B. Situation has now reached such a critical level that Germany has decided to sell the railway. Buy it? Ends up buying a European consortium? Buy it. Uh, the death of the Prussian conductor. <gasps> uh, flags across Berlin and Prussia and all the Kaiserreich flight half mastered it for Gustav Sabak el Schur, the Prussian conductor and the Kaiser's favorite military composer, has passed away, following short but honorable retirement from popular public life. Let's go over here, too. The once principal conductor for the 1st East Prussian Regiment long before the reign of the current Kaiser, Sabak had held under his belt a long and stored military and musical career, spanning decades of loyal service at the Kaiserreich. Classically trained in composition as well as he was in the military command, Sabak has been a household name in Germany with his compositions of Mozart turned to military marches and his other various musical works long being mainstays of German radio broadcasts, both within the Kaiser's own quarters and across the empire at large. In 1929, he and his wife retired to the countryside outside Konis, uh, Wusterhausen, opening up a Biergarten to service the local community and live out their golden years into the beautiful Prussian countryside, the ideal like a retirement of any true German. Here they sold beer, coffee, and brunch to fans and townsfolks alike, living in bliss until his... Uh, this hero's passing. Now, the Kaiser himself plans to hold a banquet in his honor, and has bequeathed a small fortune to his widow and family, ensuring that there's stability for decades to come. All of Germany and the wider Kaiserreich mourns for the loss of this musical military genius, and so he may ride into Valhalla in heaven as a true son of the Kaiserreich. Erasisi, and the, may the angels trumpet your arrival through the pearly gates. Good God, it's so getting worse. It's getting worse. Jesus Christ. Um, I liked that one. That one would be nice and all, but I think it'd be better to do it for your plan. Um, stop Hedges reforms. Absolutist uh, coup, huh? Continue the reforms. The Kenya uh, uh, Soul Affair. Our administration has been watching with nervous anticipation <clears throat> the progress of the Kenyatta Soul Affair, in which a Kyuku lawyer is leading a class action lawsuit against former Star Hitler Wilhelm Soul. Fortunately, the defense lawyer, Carl Schmidt, produced a novel defense, but that has established a new legal precedent. Sovereign is he who decides on the exception. The courts appeared to this argument that the Star Hitler is a sovereign authority in Africa and he has right to step outside normal legal proceedings. This obviously has started implications, or start, has starting implications, and some members of our administration already eagerly anticipate a sovereign Star Hitler. A sovereign is he who decides on the exception. Finalize them? That seems nice. De Nua Volkelschau. Volkelschau. Protected. Ooh, that's, not, that's a good idea. A second culture conf. Nice. Swapok. Swapok Mund Proving Grounds. Ooh. Reform the army, that'd be good. Long range air force, that'd be smart to do. Um, rifles from the Vatalan. That's not bad either. African divisions war economy. That'd be good to do as well. Envoy from the Congo Vista. The Congo Vista has come to us in their so called time of need, for it seems the rigors of colonial rule are becoming too much for them. A of native revolts and civilian riots within their largest cities have been the cause for concern for a colonial office, and with many within a regime are even calling for us to revoke the Flandre Wallonian mandate in order to secure the Congo fully our own way. Quite in these hasty voices for now, we must first address the matter at hand. Congo is asking for military and monetary aid to help them in the battle to maintain colonial control. Should we issue a public declaration of support for the government and send them the aid they so seek, or shall we hold them on to precious resources? In time, the struggle and leave the Vestra to their own defense. Or devices. Well, we want to centralize them, so. If you use aid, support it. Support it for now. Yeah, for your plan would be good to do next. New ec economy decisions. I mean, we'll have to do this stuff as well, but like, we'll get there. Yeah, do we Kurdish push? What do we need? We're actually okay on resources. Just go to farmers. Power, let's see, power in Mexico. Yeah, I'm just very worried. I will probably have to cheat to make sure we don't. Oh my god, it's a sense 7. What are we supposed to do here? Yeah, I'll probably have to cheat for all this stuff. Maybe we weren't supposed to go this way first, you know? Because this is, this is killing us right now. This whole uh, tremendous debt thing. You missed that political power, Jesus Christ. Preventing the collapse, nine. Currently, the monthly collapse is a three. Why? You can only collapse after 1938. Decentralization. What does it mean, increase collapse progress? You can only take two actions at a time. It's less than one. Collapse progress is less than one. Extraction. New four year plan. Um, Africa Lower House. Economic concessions. 
I'll have to look about a little bit, but blood diamonds. Piao Rixmans and the representatives of the Flandre Wallonian Congolese government have contacted us with a deal. They promise to practically double their output and precious metals as long as you skip the mandatory oversight checks of the forest public for the next few years. These checks are normally carried out to ensure ethical human conduct and exploitation ventures in the Congo, so skipping them would mean the Flandre Wallonian administration is no longer being accountable for the way they treat their African workers. Things happen. Things happen, my friends. I didn't understand this though. I want to prevent it so badly. Current collapse. So if we do this, increase the collapse progress by 1%, does it go up to 10 or does it go down to 9? It sounds like it goes up to 10. Oh, emergency government something? Oh, emergency government action. Uh, collapse approaching, Jesus Christ. Chaos is beginning to grip the African, Medi African Middle African mega colony. And across the dark core of continent of Africa, illusion of a complete control has begun to rapidly falter. Once deploy emergency measures that once say this crumbling colony for the Kaiser's life must not die out on this dark continent, troops will be mobilized as old Ascari and Valkyrie veterans are called back into the service. And emergency economic concessions and political decrees will go into immediate action to attempt to stop this hemorrhage. Martial law shall be declared and the beacon will be let so that Berlin may see, in, see in, send us aid. We should do everything in our power, moral, moral, morality, and precaution be darned. But this most righteous colonial experiment must not fail. Good. Because I don't want to fail, fail, you know. So, now what? It's so unfair that we're three, man. What were your plan, though? Um, reform the army. Well, we can go down here and get another research slot. So, De Nua Volkus, Volkuschau. Building on the techniques of Karl Hagenbach in the early 20th century, we could put together the world's greatest and most profitable ethno ethnological exposition in the world. With over a thousand performers, it's sure to be bringing in a profit while still serving the public diplomacy of our administration. Um, political actions. Oh, we could send in the army, but not really. Um, it's all cost political power that we literally just do not have. All right, implementing the four-year plan. The Deutsche Colonial Gazelle Shaft has finally been ousted and the new colonial clique is in power. Time is coming to implement a four-year plan to forge middle Africa and a Germanist iron fist against syndicalism. Arthur Zimmerman proposed a number of projects which could potentially triple our industrial output, but the remnants of the DKG that are still within our administration whine and complain that going down this path will upset the delicate balance of the colony. This, of course, is no concern to us. There are millions of Africans that can work and bleed for the borderland. If some should die in the process, our administration considers that an acceptable loss. Nice. Ooh, money campaigns. I like that. Schädelstrassen. Ooh, more political power and infrastructure. Lodging campaigns, or logging campaigns. Kaiser factories. Ooh, yes. Military factory, yes. Settlement cities. Weekly manpower, monthly population, and city political power, and building slots. I like that a lot, too. I like a lot of these. We have enough manpower for now. Little mining campaigns. We can massively increase the mining output of Middle Africa through the use of extra legal contract labor. Let's ship in natives from across the colony to work in Kaiserberg Vacken, where they will be lodged until the contract ends. The pay we give them is always less than the amount of rex marks we charge for the lodging, so we profit off our workers forever until they are inevitably replaced. New plantation open. Construction of a farm in the African hinterlands is completed, and in doing so begins the process of cultivating the earth for the crops of the life's blood of the dark continent. It is hoped that further increase in agricultural expansion will further the development of the colonies and increase the German Empire's influence throughout the region. Truly, if you can hope to match the agrarian work ethic of the African people and with the industrial might of the fatherland behind them, there will not be a soul in the empire whose belly is not full. At long last, our place in the sun. Something tiny, 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 but that's still good for us, I guess. Jesus Christ, we're gonna die here. Oh wait, the Crimean Kane is actually really cool. But uh, protect endangered species. Resistance in the factories. Um, workers in the new factories are discontent. Complaining about long hours, poor safety standards, stolen wages, and violence against workers who speak out. Becoming a problem in the urban centers, and some fear may lead to the spread of cynicalism. Fortunately for now, the workers remain disorganized, and violence will keep them that way. It's incredulous to think, but some of the most iconic species of Africa, particularly the lion, are in danger of being totally exterminated. As the wolf was from Europe in 1870, the last atlas barrel shot by hunters. Our straw hatlers are particularly interested in pushing laws that are ensure this will not happen to a native species. Stability and political power, yes please. Um, do we get, keep, are we able to keep doing that? 
13, Jesus Christ. The new Volker uh, Schau arrives in Berlin. A new Volker Schau has debuted at public acclaim in Berlin. Over a million people attended it over the week, and the successes of our administration were on display along with a thousand performances and animals. The show has increased our standing with the German government people, as well as brought in a sizable income. Hurrah! Yeah, the Kana here. This is a meme nation. Sultan? They're very strong. I like this nation. I gotta play this nation sometime, too. Um, we're probably gonna go. Oh, battleships. Uh, you know what? We'll probably go in the Navy. Trade interdiction. That just makes sense for us. Oh. They joined us. Nice. What happened up here? <clears throat> it's us, and then you guys over here as well. Okay. Do with the fanatics. People's Army. Harassing Rhea. Alright. Steel and sword. Interesting. Oh, they went to war with Ukraine. Nice. Oh, I don't think we're going to get dragged in. Okay, it's that one too. Get that one too. That'd be nice. Alright. Mm, yeah, infrastructure. Much of Middle Africa is comprised of inefficient tribal villages with little in the way of industrial capacity. We'll use a shoot stupid and some mercenary attachments to clear out these villages and press the natives to build Kaiserstrassen to connect to colonial settlements. Word is spread that the locals call them Shadowstrassen, but this is nonsense, of course. Skulls make for very poor ro royalties. Oh, uh, rotiles. Oh. Oh, uh, EBD is going crazy, huh? Not better than us. Better them than us. Ah. Uh, Bruh. We need help. God dang it. Help us. <laughs> a second culture conf. In the 1870s, the German parliament passed 22 laws to curb the power of the Catholic Church. By ruthlessly enforcing these laws, we can curb foreign elements and also ensure the monopoly of our own secular and German education system. Uh, a swamp folk mund proving grounds. To train our most capable administrators and public servants, we send them to the Nar Namibian desert for a week of harsh training and research where they are forced to rely on all of the skills they have learned so far to command a small desert settlement. Well, this is, does this cause a few deaths a year? It makes our administration among the best trained in the world. Yeah, I'll take stuff. Sure, guys, sure. Sure, yeah, sure. Well, I'd love to send stuff, but we're, like, not able to. Oh, thanks, guys. I know we're out of stuff, but, like, thanks. We appreciate it. The new book shall arrive in Vienna. Uh, oh, police shooting in Lusaka. A Makonda tribesman shot one of our police officers in Lusaka. The city is still in shock, and the perpetrator, along with any supporters, is now being detained for investigation by local police. It's been theorized that he had acquired weapons from across the border in Portugal's colonies. The death of Hulda Stumpf. Earlier today, the body of American missionary Hulda Stumpf was discovered in a roadside ditch in the highlands of Kenya. Stumpf was an outspoken opponent of the Kikuyu practice of Irua, and her body was discovered to have been cut in a traditional Kyuku manner before she was murdered. Naturally, we suspect Kyuku a religious extremist, barbaric. Uh, and then, uh, while the Toronto cannot match that of the Berlin showing, it's demonstrated to Europe that our success and brought a good chunk of the much needed revenue. Huzzah! The Kenyan Church. When it moved into the British territory in 1925, uh, the British hold on the danger was dangerously weak after seven years of warfare. In the same year, British strikes coincided with a series of protests by the natives in British East Africa. The Church of Scotland Mission declared the practice of female circumcision banned for Christians, labeling it sexual mutilization of, mutilation of women. But the dominant ethnic group of the region, uh, Kiukula, the practice, which they call Irua, is a con conditio sine qua non of the whole teaching of the tribal law religion. They feel so strong about this that it has caused a rupture within the Christian community in Kyuku land. The Anglican Church quickly followed the Scottish Church and banning the practice, but in response, the Kyuku have created their own African churches. They have established their own theological schools and become a hotbed of Kyuku nationalism. At the same time, the fall of Britain to socialism, there is a schism within the Anglican and Scottish churches themselves. At Canterbury Cathedral, the Union of Bur Britain has declared Archbishop John Hobbes Harris as the head of the worldwide Anglican Communion, when Otto, the British monarch, has declared under his authority as Supreme Governor of the Church of England, Archbishop Cosmo Gordon Lang to be head of the Communion. The Scottish Kirk has a similar schism. It's impossible to tell for certain who who any given Anglican minister believes is the real head of the church, and they might be listening to Archbishop Harris, who is a campaigner against imperialism in Africa. Ukulans, Anglican schools, encourage German schools. And that's the way we just have to go. Uh, continue reforms would be nice. Don't really need that war economy. Reform the army. The Af African Asgari in 1914 was set up uh, to the standard of the contemporary European soldier. Today, he's still the standard in 1914. He's not ready for any kind of mechanized artillery intensive battles we saw in Europe by the end of the war. We must fix this. Get down here. Yeah, kind of ignore it for now. It's fine. 
1937 budget. As 30, 1937 dawns, we must prepare for an austere budget. One that foresees a little spending and growth outside of vital areas. Okay, so we have a little bit of political power. 19. I'll give you that one. Oh, shh. Sh Nikes, we should not have done that one. Well, I'll probably replay this again and do what I can off screen. Oh, human trafficking. I love it. The Duke of Odenburg. Ah, oh, yeah. I remember this one. In place of funds, but also everyone in Middle Africa, the Sovereignistan have been re restaffing key posts in Ost Africa for quite some time now. Mongol is debating whether or not to make some money that would normally go to a protectors disappear to secretly. <clears throat> Uh, invested back in the German colonies as well as some other projects of his. SU Bills. Uh, Fritz Tyson of the Middle Falschung's Gazelle Shop to the proposal of the deal. He pro wishes to issue special bills that function as bailout bonds on behalf of his company to our government, which would alleviate our debt tremendously. The problem with the Gazelle, gazelle Shop foresees, however, is that Tyson would effectively own large swaths of Middle Africa and he's known to associate with him in Goring, so the administration is torn whether to pursue this venture or not. 19. Yeah, we're going to cheat this campaign, probably. But I don't want to cheat, but we'll probably have to. No, nope, getting better playing than ships is nice. Or we just don't do a, a focus. You know, we can do that too, but we'll see. Long Range Air Force, well, civvies are probably pretty nice here. Charles Curtis, huh? Oh. Huh. Are they going to prevent the American Civil War? Maybe. Strategic resource export. In the event of war, Middle Africa must serve to feed the great German war machine, expanding production of strategic uh, resources as well, ensure we can outproduce our enemies and strengthen the fatherland. The African breadbasket. Much of Africa is little in the way of agricultural development, but we do have what was invested in cash crops suitably only for the tropics. The last Vell Creek showed the Germans vulnerable to its lack of foodstuffs, and so by focusing on staples such as corn and rice rather than tobacco and pepper, we can help ensure victory. Uh, they arrive in Constantinople. The Germans have put on a fantastic live show post carnival and part, part carnival and zoo. It's got over a thousand authentic African tribes, men and women, and exotic animals despite protests from some of the city's imams that show the city's dehumanizing. Comparing to human zoo, the show drew in over one thousand hundred thousand over one hundred thousand attendees. It's good clean fun. New plantation open. Yay. Ah, if you're in this game, please go ahead. Yay. So we do this, I didn't realize we lose ninety political power, which is god awful. Um, so we'll see. They arrived in Constantinople. Nice. Another good show. I love having great shows. That was to take more actions to prevent middle African collapse. I mean, what does that do? That's over 20. Shh, Nikes. There's nothing we can do about this. Mining. <coughs> I don't mind that one because 75 is pretty good. 100 is very good, though. Lodging campaigns. Uh, Middle Africa could be the foremost producer of wood, wood, wood in the world. I'll take some extra legal labor, a new few garrisons here and there, and our Kaiser Holzfeldjäger will bring us great profits. Those trees were only standing in our way, anyways. Kaiser factories. A minor minister has suggested that we construct armament manufactories directly inside native villages, effectively converting them into processing plants with pre-built lodging. He calls these manufactories Kaiser Fabriken. Ka uh, Zimmerman had commented, uh, committed the administrator and has given the newer colonial clique the go-ahead to start building uh, settlement cities. The Stahetler and Zimmermann have been discussing on expanding the German settlement in Middle Africa. Our administration can employ extra legal contractors to construct Siedlungsstädte, which are almost entirely self-sufficient, clear, wasteful ter terrain, and will disperse native or idle natives. Clear, and this is, clear, this is an excellent idea which we should move forward to. We clear our debt. Oh! Most of our government expected the worst, and everyone expected the economy to remain dead, but some were no longer poor. This announcement has our entire government uh, baffled. No one expected us to actually fix our economy or actually be functioning by the end of Black Monday. But somehow, with some divine intervention from some higher being, we did it. That was Middle Africa. Oh, thank Jesus Christ, it's over now. But we're over above this. What are we supposed to do now? Okay, so let's save. We actually have some political power. We're losing some political power. God dang it, still. Kind of sucks, not going to lie. Um, I don't want to do this ever again. Economic concessions. I guess it doesn't really matter. Internal protectorates? Solidify stuff? Uh, I kind of like economic recessions. 
or concessions. It's far easier and less decaying to repair a power base to grant economic and aid and concessions instead of political ones. Where it's less dangerous to give savages money than the right to vote. Uh, right to vote. With Smith smiling faces, we shall grant the native African parity and equality within our markets and business areas. But behind the facade, we know that they are as powerless as ever while being ever more pacified is easier to rule. So I want to see what happens with that. And since we have a little more political power too, I and mean, we can do this stuff down here too because we need to. But we don't have time for this because we need to prevent the collapse. So lower house, urban segregation. Um, a rather drastic solution to lower the ethnic and racial tensions that have long existed in the lands of Middle Africa and that have only been stacked since the arrival of colonials is to enact total segregation with the most densely populated and more cosmopolitan regions of our colony, our cities. By introducing a new color bar and a policy of separate but equal, we should hopefully be able to allow all of our citizens to enjoy the benefits of our mental policies without fear of being lynched or mugged over the skin color of tribal affiliation, and more importantly, without starting more race riots and ethnic revolts and protests. Yeah, I love separate but equal. It just makes sense, you know? I'm just very worried about this campaign. I just want to do well, man. Oh, the Schultz, uh, Schultz Gebita beckon. As situation at home worsens and our funds run dry, the protected areas beg for help. Lest to be dragged down with us, and when they call, we will answer. The Schultz Gebita beckon will have respond to the calls. Laying out our plans. Um, must deal with situation everywhere. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, what did I get myself involved with? Uh, probably go with superior firepower because it's usually pretty good to do. Okay, so now what? It's still a three. It's a twenty. Is it still increasing? What? That's so unfair. What are we supposed to do? We have no political power. There's nothing we can do about that. Is there? Another police officer has been shot. Another policeman, this time from Le Longue, has been shot by a radicalized native who's a member of the Maconde tribe. This cause of his radicalization and the source of his weapons are still being investigated. However, it's possible that he received stuff from Portugal. It's an outrage. Just let me do this god dang button. Christmas in Middle Africa. A joyous day to all the peoples in the colony has arrived as the various denizens of Af Middle Africa celebrate the most holy of holidays. Family, farmers, soldiers, and bureaucrats alike all, sp all spend the day commiserating with one another while feasting, singing, dancing, and drinking in an atmosphere of pure love and peace for the strata of society. For a brief moment, the population felt at peace and with one in itself as a whole. And the moment, rarely seen in the colonies, the colonials and natives were seen side by side in the festivities. Held in the glee were hopes and dreams of colonial coexistence for a future seem but in a glimpsed end, however briefly, was, was one witness with a range of emotions. Many of the veteran soldiers were reminding the Christmas truce of the 1950s, seeing in their mind's eye a moment for the, in time free from the divisions of the society, one, where one might live and prosper at once one. Whatever the future may bring, today we shall rejoice, rejoice, and be merry. For the show of Einachten. Nothing about stability, though. We're just human trafficking people, that's all. Things happen, things happen. Laying out our plans. Mercenaries arrived. The colonial military administration welcomed onto African soldier a cadre of mercenary soldiers for hire in hopes of bolstering the reserves force of Middle Africa. Given the scarcity of skilled fighters on the dark continent outside Ascari and German main fighting forces, the administration thought it prudent to outsource the manpower for its reserves fighters, primarily to veterans from Flanders, Great Britain, and many other nations. Hope that the coin from the coffers uh, will be enough to scale the loyalty to these would be colonial troopers. A price from victory. 1937 budget. Going into 1937, we faced a difficult choice. Our economy wasn't strong in the first place, and the black money annihilated what manufacturing potential we had for the better part of the last year. Going forward, though, we're going to have to choose to focus on our military production, or divert our limited resources towards repairing the civilian economy instead. Military buildup. A long-term investment here can make more sense. Uh, you get 35% more construction power here. You get 35% uh, more construction speed or factory output. Long-term investment. Okay, so that auto bypass, which is nice, actually. Laying out our plans. Now that the issue is settled, we're finally able to lay out plans for Middle Africa. We don't know which one to focus on first. We either try to finish the Cape de Cairo railway and just as usable land, or try to modernize the build of the military. Plans have been left for later for approval. Finish the railway. Industrialization. I like the railway. Cape de Cairo. Industrialization is probably the way we want to go. We'll raise payments. Gold Coast. For coffee tax. Break bread with the Duke. I'm not sure which one we want to do. Ignore extensive corruption in West Africa. Pacified. Greatly improve the situation in West Africa. Decentralization. Expand the economy. Then it's come for Hadrish.
Um, which one is the lowest one? Let's probably do the lowest one first. Five, five. Uh, Kenya, Uganda is really bad, as well as Nigeria. Kenya, Uganda. North Africa. That's Madagascar. Kenya, Uganda. Congo. Well, I need Ruby for Danin Gedanken. Kenya Uganda may not be this may not be a special case to us, but at the moment the lackluster job pacification is a pressing concern. Low German influence. Angles plotting and Mama waiting. All these are issues that must be addressed soon. I'm not sure this is a good one to do, but committee for a German settlement? We're still at war, huh? Despite our nominal control over Kenya Uganda, the settlement of the German people in the region have been virtually non existent. To attempt to solve this problem, we have established a committee that will hopefully settle the German majority in the region. Nice. And today, the Colonial Law Enforcement Administration authorized and oversaw the training and drilling of rural police force outside the city limits of Dar es Salaam. With well, the colonial military so underdeveloped compared to what it was during the Valkyrie, Middle Africa has become heavily reliant on these rural uh, militias to keep the peace in the dark continent. And given the current economic situation in Africa, these men in uniform have become invaluable in the administration's efforts to preserve stability and prosperity in Middle Africa's urban centers. Protect and serve. Give us a goddamn PP. Oh, dealing with the Europeans are with their debt finally paid off, and the perfidious Alta Kempa disgraced by the corruption investigation. Uh, the new colonial clique finally calls itself new colonial Regirum. It's time to put forward plans for the Europeans within Middle Africa and those in our protectorates. Militarizing the colony to combat syndicalism in Europe is our number one priority, which conveniently gives us carte blanche to many ventures in the old TKG would not dare to embark on. Well, according to ourselves, anyway. Dealing with the French, British, Mercs. I love human trafficking and bezel funds. I don't want that one. But issue bells. I don't mind issuing bells though. That one's I'm fine with. We're gonna lose stuff here. I don't. I just don't know. I just want to be successful. I just want a goring Middle Africa. We're gonna lose the political power for like a few days, and if we can, then we're gonna choose this one if possible. Prevents a collapse. Please let us prevent the collapse for the love of God. So, does that mean we need to do this one anymore? So we're 20. Currently, monthly cost is a 3. Because if we if we have to worry about this one anymore, then I'd rather just focus on, like, our other states. How are we still at war with these guys? How are you still losing? It's only Ukraine. Never mind. Um, <laughs> can you Uganda? Urban tension, centralization... Um, I just kind of want to wait and see because yeah, we're losing political power, but it's not that much. Committee for German settlements is very nice. I want to see what this one does. If this completely cl closes this one out, I'll be happy. Divestor at native education. Whether a dire financial state, or else we can keep going over here. Oh, we can go over here. Oh, we should do this one first. The Cape to Cairo Railway. It's time to finish what the British started. The Cape to Cairo Railway will lead to massive economic growth across the continent. We want to get that one done as fast as possible. Uh, industrial development's not bad. I can't wait for that one though, because I do want to rush through this stuff to best our natural resources. Anniversary of Mahawa. This is the anniversary of the Battle of Mahawa, the most successful battle of the East African Campaign. And the Battle of the King of African Rifles. Our circle and surrendered or by the armies of Paul von Lutte-Vorbeck from the south and east, and Kurt Avelos from the north and west. The British lost nearly 4,000 men in the operation to a loss of less than 200 German Ascari. The battle paved the way for our invasion and conquest of Mozambique in 1918 since 1922. It's been a state holiday in Middle Africa. It's been celebrated throughout the colony, but especially in Dar es Salaam, with parades and military drills as it reminds every citizen and subject of our need and capacity for military excellence. Haya Safari. With the dollar financial state, education for the natives is not a priority worth investing in anymore. We have more important things to invest in anyways. Perhaps once this crisis is over, we can transfer funds back to educating the natives. We'll make no promises, though. Oh, I did get rid of it. Oh my god, that's so good. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thank God. I love the de death now. I'm still going to complain about them probably eventually. They're not going to like me at all, but whatever. Um, as much as I want to get some of this stuff, like, we got to focus on Africa. Jesus Christ. I love illicit activities. We could do this stuff too. But Kenyan Free State, because we are dealing with them. Lodging, this is really good to do from the political power of Kenya. I want Kenya to be really strong. Integrate them. Centralization is above 20. Revoke protectorate status. Oh. Deal with Buganda Kingdom. The Kingdom of Buganda is one of the largest native kingdoms within Middle Africa and is the largest united political entity within this Freistaat, along with the official colonial government itself. Its king is one of the many paramount chiefs within Middle Africa, guaranteeing him large autonomy which allows him to rule his people as he sees fit within reason, as dictated by the Middle African government. 
which should grant him and his autonomy of greater privileges while renewing old deals between our governments to ensure the loyalty of the Burgundians so that we may use him as a bulwark against rising Republican and socialist ideals among the natives. 60 is so expensive. I guess we'll focus on these guys first. Maybe that's a bad idea, but we're going to focus on them first and unify them here. Even though it'll probably make more sense to get over here and unify them because we can just go directly across there and these probably actually have more resources than up here, but whatever. My bad. Whatever. It's, it's still good to get an integrate with us, so. As long as we don't collapse, that's my greatest worry. Center left coalition wins Kenyan Ugandanese elections. In an upset, the center left coalitions won the Kenyan Ugandanese elections with celebrations across the nation lasting into the night. Also, unsurprising to many that the center left coalition would reclaim victory, but with their plans for the nation known, the future looks bright. Crap. How are, are we still at war? My god. In a war artillery, 1937. Happy 37, everybody. I'm feeling much better about this campaign now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, guys. This is why I don't want to help you out. You're killing off your guys, own guys for nothing. Send some planes or something. I don't know. There you go. We have no dockyards. Dang it. Yeah. Cut education. Uh... Yeah, no, over there. Over here would be nice, but you don't have to. Agree with the Dowdy Claw? The Uganda region is currently ruled all on behalf of Dowdy Claw II, who has a town along with other several tribal leaders. However, he. Oh, there goes America. Uh, <clears throat> Has more influence and power than any local chief, ruling over several chiefs who have assholes to him, giving him considerable influence, which gets in the way of our centralization progress. We have two main choices. The first would be to negotiate with him, to help our local administration in the centralization process in exchange for an increase in autonomy, and guarantee they'll not touch his privileges and titles that will let him control his army. The second, more radical approach would be to revoke his privileges once and for all, and bring the region under direct control and control, which undoubtedly anger the tribal leaders but will greatly assist our centralization process. Both choices are considered viable for administration, so the final choice remains. Agreements? Or direct rule? Okay, so descent's not going to matter. Thank God. Yeah, I'm going to go Drucker Wolf. We have to kill him off, so be it. I don't care. Send in the soldiers. Support free state collaborationists. We cannot help to rule the territories in U uh, Kenya, Uganda alone. We need to encourage existing infrastructure on the British government in the lands to the stand by the vital land. That's the only way to ensure effective governance of the territory. Because there are two, which is not good still, but whatever. But whatever. It's fine. Are we even making any ships? I don't think we are. Third police officer has been shot. Tragedy stuck Dar es Salaam yet again for the third time. Police officer has been shot. This time by a member of the uh, Mokonda tribe. Uh, the Dar es Salaam police are now searching for the murder and the cause of the attack. Portuguese involvement is suspected. I mean, that's why we're down here already. Like, we're ready to go against the, those guys. So, ooh, 98. Oh, yes. Yes. I just want more political power. Because right now, we are ooh, still going down. We're paternal autocrats for now. Settlement cities. Oh, that would be good too. Or weekly manpower. 70, it's only 70 political power, but a military factory would be really good, but it's only 50 PP. I want as much PP as possible. So that would be good. I like this one, but this one gives more daily paternal autocrat support, which is not bad right now. Infrastructure construction speed, which means nothing to us. We lose population, whatever, stability, whatever. Um, I guess we do lose stability for everything, don't we? It is what it is. You know. Whatever. Quash Ugandan militarism. The rampart militarist attitude has been again propping up with the Ugandans as the veteran Askaris grow tired of their subservience and spread their war-forged ideas in their tribesmen and compatriots. These dangerous attitudes must be quashed, lest we face an open revolt from the heroes of these Valkyrie for their honorable positions, which should be a beacon to rally around. So, how about no? As we're now sending planes to help them out here at this point, I'm just like, you know what, screw it, help them out. Ooh, what do we have around here? Oh, so 38, we can still do more influence stuff. I think it's best to focus on one at a time, maybe? Because we can switch up down here, centralization, whatnot, and I'd like to do all this stuff, but like, I think I want to rush one at a time. Ooh, you know what I like? Oh, this thing is planes, or guns. What if, why are we losing so many guns? Oh, because we probably made another division, duh. There you go. Panama Canal Crisis. Oh, I guess we could help out America, but I don't really care about America right now. Um, 1937, of course. Anything better around here? All doing all the stuff, synthetic stuff. We honestly probably won't need that for this campaign because we ha should have enough rubber and fuel for all, well, maybe not. All campaign eventually, maybe. We'll see. We're still losing political power, god dang it. Ah, oh, such a bummer. Naval stuff. Not sure if we can really b build up a huge navy someday, but you know, we'll work on it. We'll try. Mercenaries arrive. Oh, okay. More support's nice. So, the planes are here. New plantation open. Yay! Help them out as much as you can, you know. Can't do only so much bombing. Yeah, we're gonna keep going this way. Ost Afrikanische Kaiserfabrik Complex. 
The Greeks, Kenya, Uganda's relatively small amount of stability, will have chosen to use it as a hub of a large factory complex that is to be constructed near soil. With some love, it will strengthen our economy and provide some new jobs. Because there are three currently. Quash them, it would be nice as well. Um, so, in the seeds of growth. Though the mindful of the necessity of the colonial construct is issues Middle Africa, we've laid in the Northeast the foundations of a true industrial economy. It may take a decade to truly bloom, but our experts agree on foreseeing a bright future for Kenya and its surroundings. That'd be great. I love how short these focuses are. Oh, look at the stability. It's so bad. Oh my god. Weekly change is going down even more. Wait, why is that? Border raid? Plantation burn. A cashew plantation in Nyasi land has been burned by the bandits operating from the Portuguese border. They've taken as much as they could from the recently harvested crop, burned the rest down, and escaped back into Portuguese Mozambique. Jesus Christ. Oh, thank god we got more political power. Uh, we're gonna do double here. As much as I want to get to, like, early mobilization, we're just gonna beeline through this stuff. Solve white highland issues. The white highlands are not only a holy set to many biblical tribes, but also hold some of the most fertile and prized soil in all of East Africa. Long ago, the very myriad peoples of Kenya farmed these lands, until the Angles arrived decades ago and began taking this rich land and bountiful land for themselves. The situation has escalated into now a point, a new point, that the Anglo colonists and occasional German owned and worked nearly all the land in these highlands, forcibly evicting the previ previous native inhabitants, whose farm and, and honey grounds lasted here for centuries. We must establish a new status quo in the White Highlands, so that each group has equal access to these lands to prevent the violence seen here from spilling to the rest of the Free State. Alleviate urban ethnic tensions. The cities within Kenya and Uganda are relatively peaceful by Middle African standards, with racial violence and inequalities being lower here than that in most other colonies. And this issue case nowhere else better than Nairobi. However, we are still far from a cosmopolitan utopia, and as such, we should take some steps to alleviate the current racial tensions that do exist, particularly between the various different religious and ethnic groups within the urban populations that have long bodied heads, as well as the rising tide of African socialism. It's going to take forever to do. Embezzle funds. Uh, I don't want to do this. But monthly cost means nothing. You lose political power, but for 200 days you get 25% more. You lose stability and get way more political power. So, uh, I guess we have to do it. Nothing else here to do. That sucks. I don't like that. Hey, what? Hey, we're actually at one. Which is not bad, actually. Oh, yeah, I know. Not bad. But my god, negative 45%. Why is the weekly change so bad? I, I, I don't understand. Bills suck. Human trafficking, who cares? Border raids. Oh, we're down here. How do we bring a stop to them, though? I, I don't know. Is there something I'm missing? It's probably something I'm missing. Armor trains. I don't think we really need that too much. Um, we probably need logistics, especially in Africa. Is there anything for Portugal here? Port. Or maybe a raid? No. Alright, a war economy would be nice. Early mobilization. Uh, African divisions. Bongo, bongo, and the Congo. Bingo, bongo. Bingo, bango, bongo. Labor laws, no one cares about that. West Africa. Ignore extensive corruption. Well, I want to rush through everything here. Rhodesia are still in need. Uh, Rhodesia's, Rhodesia's, uh, Rhodesians never died. To the south, Rhodesia still holds on. The British still hold great amounts of influence in their administration. I struggle to respond accordingly. Hopefully, Hans Hutte can sort out the situation before anything, everything that completely collapses. Death of Bernhard Denberg. Sad news comes from Berlin today. Bernhard Denberg, former head of the Imperial Colonial Office, has died. He served for only three years from 1907 to 10, but in enormous influence on the development of the colony of Germany's Africa, and would eventually form the core of Middle Africa. It was his reforms that firmly established a first fully secular education on the African continent, a legacy we have tried with difficulty to spread throughout Middle Africa. A small ceremony was held in Dar es Salaam in his honor, with a street being named Bernhard Denberg Strasse. Speak of his triumphs. Into the politics. National Judaism, which lowers our political power gain. Whoopsie. Uh, Polit, uh, side through exercises. And the day, the Colonial Law Enforcement Administration authorized and oversaw the training and drilling of a rural police force outside the city limits of Dar es Salaam. With well, the colonial military so underdeveloped compared to what it was during the Val Creek, Middle Africa has become heavily reliant on these rural militias to keep the peace in the dark continent. Given the current economic situation in Africa, these men in uniform have become invaluable in the administration's efforts to preserve stability and prosperity in Middle Africa's urban centers. Protect and serve. German Law and North Rhodesian. The administration of Nord Rhodesia will still use this law as recycled from the British administration, something that has paralyzed the legal system for the region. Revising the legal system to follow German laws is a must. A few good men. 
Our hold on Northern Odysseus is loose and those fully loyal to the government in Dar es Salaam are few, but those few loyalists ought to be empowered and made the sole governing officials of the colony. This may not be popular with the Anglos, but who cares about their opinions? Use the households. Homeowners and settlers in Northern Odysseus, they have been mostly either indifferent to a rule or marginally against it. A few empty promises could change the minds of this influential group. Nothing else here, huh? Throw all your stuff here, and... Uh, I'll get some extraction. We'll get some more extract more. Use households, of course. It's no secret that Nord Odysseus is a vast frontier, mainly unsecured by our forces. To keep control of what little we have there, we must bolster and reinforce the region's armed forces. Oh, finally, the Spanish Civil War in 1937, huh? Um, meet the new boss. We've successfully managed to dislodge the British in Nord Odysseus, other newly unchecked authority. Now the region swears loyalty to the Vatalem, and only the Vatalem. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we are going to be struggling a whole bunch to maintain Deutsch Middle Africa under von Goring. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.